Let's take the opportunity, shall we? Excuse me, Mr. Fenukin. I'm John Stoker. I'm perfectly aware who you are. I realize uh, we can't discuss the trial whilst it's still sub judice. That's right. We can't. But I was wondering if you might arrange for us to have a word with your client when this is all over. I doubt Martin would want to talk to you. Well, he's made no statement to the IUC not got a lot to go on. An accused man still has the right to remain silent. They haven't taken that away yet, as far as I'm aware. Look, we're not the RUC. You find we do things differently. From the mainland. Why? Like the British Army. Well, we're conducting an independent inquiry. Mr. Stoker, may I have a word with you? You might mention it to him. Aye. Uh, are you aware who that was? He's a flaming probie. He's Martin McCauley's solicitor. These types are worse than the IRA. I will not be dictated to by you as to who I can, cannot converse with. And did you know he's got a brother who's a wanted terrorist on the run? I hope you're aware of what embarrassment you've caused the force. Why, could you just mark your position on the map at the time you first discharged shots? Here, my lord. And the position of Ty? You have indicated that he was standing on top of some bales. Yes, sir. And the bales were some five foot high? Approximately that height, sir, yes. And if we take it that the individual was round about five foot seven or eight, that would put his head at some, at least, ten foot in the air? That would be correct, my lord, yes. And was the person pointing a weapon at you? He was, my lord, yes. And if your bullet struck a man who was standing in the position which you described, you would expect the bullet to go in, first of all, from front to back, because he was facing you? That would be right, my lord, yes. And you would expect it to go in at a lower angle and at a lower height than it would exit? You would, my lord. I suggest that the young man Tig was struck twice, and I will produce expert evidence to show that on both occasions the exit wound was lower than the entrance wound. I know nothing about that, my lord. It would be curious, wouldn't it, if a man were standing high above you? I wouldn't be in a position to say, my lord, Assistant Chief Constable Trevor Forbes, head of the Special Branch of Northern Ireland. You know well who I am. I have to tell you that anything you say will be taken down and maybe used against me. I have reason to believe that you did knowingly conspire to suppress evidence and to mislead the Director of Public Prosecutions on a serious incident. What? Specifically? Tampering with a crash incident report. Do you know what you're doing, Mr. Stoker? I think I'm fully aware of the remit of my investigation. Now, oh, will you get off your hay horse, man? Special Branch's entire dealings with my inquiry have been characterized by a contemptuous lack of cooperation. A word, Mr. Stoker. In private.
Well, well, well. That seems to have had the desired effect. What's going on? It's a bedtime reading for you, John. That's the informant's intelligence file. Read, mark, and inwardly digest. I'm going back to see how the trial's progressing. There are some points of clarification I wish to put to the witness. Certainly, my lord. Sergeant X, when you pulled the accused there, he was still conscious, was he? I cannot remember, my lord. He might have been. He was very badly injured, was he? He was, yes, my lord. Did he say anything to you at all? He said no word at all, my lord. Was he moaning or expressing pain? Not that I can recall, no, my lord. And while you were attending to the injured person, did you have any talk with him? No, my lord. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. You've described to his lordship how you opened fire on these occasions. Can you say why you opened fire? I was apprehensive for the safety of my own life and that of my colleagues, my lord. No further questions, my lord. It's better be good. It's at a crucial stage in there. Sure. Yeah. That's from the intelligence files. It's been suitably doctored as usual, but I think they may have missed this. Ty, I've come to feed the dogs. I said, to... what is this? Look at the date. 21st of November, 1982. It's a tape transcript from the Hayshed. They must have had a bug in there. Three days before an apparently random shooting. I reckon there was a tape running when Ty and Macaulay were shot, sir. We get hold of that tape. We could prove once and for all whether our friends in there are purging themselves. We'll go and see the DPP. We've got to get this trial stopped. Surveillance on the Hayshed is not to be an aspect of the crime's case. I need that tape, sir. Well, I can see what you do. If there is a tape, yes. <clears throat> if it was running at the time of the shootings, it would prove once and for all whether a warning was shouted. Macaulay told his doctor that I stood over him discussing whether to finish him off. But if that's on the tape, that's dynamite. Yes, yes. If, if. We need you to stop Macaulay's trial, sir. We need time to check the REC story against a full tape transcript. I don't think that anything you've told me would influence the Crown not to proceed with the trial. However, if you can find any evidence to support these speculations, I can assure you that the DPP's office would take the matter seriously. Now, very seriously indeed. <laughs> <laughs>